And we uh, came across a tragic incident uh, where our community was harmed and some young people almost lost their lives. Uh, it brings me much joy to see you all come out here today uh, to help make the summer, uh, the rest of the summer safe and better. Um, we know that it's difficult living in the Mystics uh, and, you know, the, the stain that's on our community, you know, obviously living in the projects and whatnot. But the people that live here love this community. And you guys coming out here shows how much you love your community. We have some of our elected officials that are out here today. We want to thank them for coming out. Um, but we also have uh, Sarah Sarnecki and her uh, um, trauma response team. Um, that's going to come out here. That's going to be out here available all day. But I really want to applaud you guys for coming out. It shows how much that you care about your community. And these are the people that you have to care about. Your neighbors are your friends. And you never know when you might lose them. We owe these kids a good, solid summer. We had them stuck in the house for three months, quarantining, and we're not gonna take away this summer because of stupid violence. So we hope that we can come together and be focused as a community, because it is very, very important that we give these kids the summer that they deserve. Of course, we're gonna have a couple of people come up today and speak on behalf of uh, changes that we can make, but I want everybody in the, in the crowd to think about ways that you can make the community better. Each and every single one of you matters. Just like when you're filling out the census. You have to do what you gotta do for your community so you can make it better. And it really means a lot to have you guys out here. I'm not gonna go on and on because this is about a community meeting and listening to you guys. Um, but next I'm gonna introduce our, our, our mayor, Joseph Anthony Cotatoni. Good evening. I'm gonna be brief because uh, as Steph said, we're here to listen to you, and I will be here tomorrow morning uh, along with City Council from this neighborhood, Ward 4, Jesse Klingen. But I do want to, there's Jesse, and I want to recognize Bill and Bob, Council at Large as well. Uh, from the school committee from Ward 4, Mr. Andre Green, the state representative, Steve Barber, and you'll hear from Chief Fallon. Let me just say one thing first. I myself, I'm your mayor, I work for you. If you want, Pretty much, you see, you're looking at Stand Up Works for you. And this is another one of some of the special neighborhoods. And I want to echo what Steph said. I know you love your neighborhood. I came down that evening. I am grateful. And thank the Lord that nobody was killed. And I hope if they're here and their families are here to the victims who survived that night and their families, I am deeply sorry. Our prayers are with you. We support you. We support this community. This community is made up of hardworking families love this city and try to give their families every basic essential you need to have a good quality of life. Our responsibility is to listen to you and give you the resources to live a safe, healthy life here in some of them. Resources we can bring to the table are limitless, so we're here to listen. And we need to do better by you. So I'll speak for everyone. Again, we are sorry that you had to experience that cowardly act of violence violence. We're grateful nobody lost their life. We're not going to tolerate it. We're thankful to the Somerville Police Department and the Cambridge Police for arresting three, three people let you commit that crime that night. I want to thank them. <laughs> but we know we're not going to arrest our way out of crime. we got to get to the root cause of what's causing crime. We're going to make sure people in this community, this neighborhood, have all the resources they need to provide for their families, to have jobs, and there's a lot more we need to do. So I want to let you know, all your elected officials here, everyone works for the Housing Authority. I've spoken to Mr. Macaluso and his team, the Chief, the Attorney General's Office, Mara Haley, who I just got off the phone with, your state delegation, we work for you. And I'll see if, if I don't catch you here before I leave tonight, I'll be here tomorrow morning at 10.30 with Jesse Klingon. Thank you for coming out tonight. Appreciate it. So folks, uh, this is one of the hardest things I've had to do since I've been in office, uh, to come up here and speak to you about this tragedy that happened in the community. And I know what people are thinking, you know, here we are, elected officials in here after something happens, um, and, and I've actually been accused of that, um, you know, through text messages. And I can tell you all that I'm well aware of the, of the other shootings that have happened ever since I've been elected, including starting with Kevin 
uh, right over right over yonder there. And um, I just want you to know that I've been working in this community to make it safer. And, but you need we need a stronger tenants union, a tenants association. Steph has done his best, but we need people to get behind him so that we can have you know there's nothing stronger than a union. I know that people get nervous to to uh, to come out and speak uh, about these things, but. The only way, we will listen. I'm here to listen. The mayor's here to listen. Andre Green from the school committee is here to listen. Uh, you got our attention now, so so whether or not, you know, and I'm not gonna go back to my house and, and just forget about all this. I will be around. You probably see me around on my bike, uh, in and out of this place. Um, and, uh, you know, I just wanna hear ideas. You know, it's, it's, it's a funny situation because you have people out there that talk about in here and say like they want to take some of the gates down and we are one community right but yet it still feels like a separate community and i hear from people in here that say hey we want to put a gate up like harbor point we don't want people to have free access to come and go so we have these two uh diversion uh, you know these two uh, uh colliding interests and so we need to hear from you what it's going to take to make your community safer or else you know what uh Things are just going to stay the same. So, uh, you know, I, I was born and raised in the city. I've seen gangs come. I've seen gangs go. The mayor's made uh, great strides around that stuff, but uh, we have a problem, and uh, we're here to address it. So, please, just keep talking, please. Thank you so much, Councilman. Appreciate that, Chief. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Chief Emma. Yeah, so good evening. I just say, you know, I got a big space in my heart for this neighborhood because when I was a patrolman, this was the area that I patrolled. So I know firsthand what a great neighborhood this is and the people that reside here, what great people okay. they are. Sorry, so if you couldn't hear me, I have a very special spot in my heart for this neighborhood because when I was a patrolman, this was my area. So I know the character of person down here and what a great asset they are to this community. I want to assure you tonight that we are your police department. We're going to listen to your concerns and we're going to provide the type of policing that you want, that you desire. So give us your input. You're going to see more of us down here because we want to have a presence down here. We want to work, work hand in hand with the community and make sure everybody feels safe to go outside the home. This is a very safe neighborhood. What happened the other night was an anomaly and the police acted very quickly to make three arrests that evening that directly tied to what took place in this community. What took place in this community is absolutely 100% unacceptable. Random acts of violence like that, like that, they show a total disregard for human life, totally unacceptable. And we're never going to stand for it, we're never going to tolerate it. We're going to work very closely with our partners and the housing police to provide the utmost level of policing services, but the style and type of policing that you desire, that you want. So let us know. You're going to see more of us, you're going to see more of me. We're going to be down here, we're going to be present, and we look forward to collaborating together. So I'm proud to be here tonight. I'm proud to be from Somerville. I'm proud to be from this community. Let's all make it the best we can be together. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Chief. Appreciate that. Um, but just to reiterate, uh, when, I, when I moved out of here in January, I apologize. We weren't able to have um, a tenant election uh, due to COVID. So, um, so we're still trying to figure out how to do that. Uh, so right now I'm like um, in between community kind of liaison. We'll stick around and help out the MTA after the election too. Um, this community means the world. This community means the world to me. I've lived here for 15 years. Uh, you can move the man out of uh, out of the mystics, but you can't move the mystics out of the man. And so I'm gonna keep on working with you guys. Keep on helping you out. I'll be passing my card out. Please stay in contact with me if you guys need anything, anything, anything I can help you out with. I'd be more than happy to. Uh, yeah, of course. And um, so we're just gonna leave it out to the floor. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say responses. You know, we're gonna quick, uh, quick community update. We're gonna try to get that election done as quickly as possible. Um, one of the suggestions that was brought to me, and I really, really like it, was trying to get set up a community watch. Um, there's 1,400 residents that live here. You know, um, that's 2,800 eyes. I mean, we we can we can help out the police force for a lot. Remember, uh, you got to protect your community. You live here. So, um, so if you really want to make a difference, please use your voices to do so. And uh, don't hold back as I look before to hear some responses. Uh, don't, don't we, do we have a microphone to bring on the crowd? No, that's only microphone. Yeah, yes. Uh, so please, if you want to say something, just come right on up and um, you know, we'll make a little line over here.
evening. Uh, my name is Cindy Gould and I'm a resident here for over 10 years. I'm actually the current MTA Mystic President, uh, Vice President. So you can also contact me if you need my information. I'll make that available to you. Um, we are definitely looking for no more officials for our Mystic Tenant Association so that we can rise up as a community to communicate with our police department, to communicate with Somerville Housing Authority, so that we all can be on the same page and knowing that we can be safe and, and you know, live a good life here. And so if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, you're more than welcome to address that to me. Just come to me and I'll give out my email address to you, okay? Thank you. There should be detectors, technology is so developed that at this point there should be detectors for each home. Los padres sufren. Parents suffer. Y las madres también. Mothers suffer. Las leyes protegen más a los jóvenes. The laws protect the youth. Deberían de hacer leyes y programas más para los jóvenes. There should be more laws and uh, programs for the youth. Legalizaron la marihuana. They legalized. Eso trajo más problemas. They legalized um, marijuana and that has brought more issues. Tienen que poner más programas para los jóvenes. There should be more uh, programs for the youth. Por montones se están echando a perder. Many are sort of at loss. A lot of youth are at loss. Yo tengo ahí una, una que llegó a la casa de regreso, mi hija, y no sale por miedo a la comunidad. I, one of my daughters returned home and she does not leave her, leave, leave her home because Me she's scared. Me dio muchos nombres de muchos jóvenes que le han hecho mucho daño y no voy a especificar, pero yo le he dicho a la policía y la policía no ha hecho nada y que somos locas. She's, she, her daughter has named a couple of, uh, of people that she knows are very dangerous and she has brought that to the police and the police has not done anything about it. Y yo sí tengo traumatismo emocional de tanto que me han abusado, ¿ok? She does feel traumatic. Um, y no le permito trauma. más a nadie que a, me abuse a mí y a Carla Salmerón y a Natalia Salmerón y se lo estoy diciendo a la comunidad, no voy a perdonar más. Y a la policía también. She refuses to be abused uh, repeatedly. She named herself and her daughter. Tienen que ver ese grupito que se agrupa por la tarde. Andan armas y yo se las he visto, ¿ok? Esos grupitos de jóvenes drogándose andan armas. Vienen de empezarlo a desarmar, ¿ok? There are there are a group of gangs that have arms, have guns, and they should be disarmed. Y no tengo miedo de denunciar los que lleguen ya vivo en el Juan Memorial Road que vayan y me maten no tengo miedo pero tienen que desaparecer esa gente to announce announce her names to report them she said where she lives and she's not afraid she does want to report them yo crecí yo crecí y balas me pasaban por donde quiera crecí en la guerra del Salvador y no le tengo miedo a nada 
Y she, no, que no más abusen mis hijas. She grew up in Salvador where, with civil war, with bullets um, flying right by her, and she is not scared. She no longer wants to be abused by that way, and she does not want the abuse for her daughter. Thank you. Alright, so I've lived here since I was five years old and must be 33. And in the past year alone, the amount of gun violence that's been out here is crazy. Like security, I hate to say say this, but y'all gotta start riding around a lot more. Because when y'all ride around once every couple of hours, as soon as they see you leave, they come right up. Like, you guys gotta have more of a presence. And I do agree that we need a gate. Because if you guys have people up at the top asking who they're going to visit, most likely you're not gonna have this type of problem. Because if you have names of the residents that live here, and these people are coming to visit them, there should be no problem. If they're coming in here to start a problem, you can stop it before it even starts. Like, that's the best way to do it, to be honest. So I've been here for so long, and this is crazy. Like, my daughter's traumatized. Like, I'm not trying to deal with it. Deal with it more. Like, something has to happen. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Picasso. Um, I'm a lieutenant with the Summer Police Department. I've been on the job since 2008. I just want to thank the, the residents that just came out and briefly spoke. Those are powerful words. We hear them. And uh, we just want to let you guys know that we're in this together. You know, you guys aren't alone. This is a community effort. This is where we're going to be from collaborative uh, partnerships because without, without the public, without the community and the trust, we're not them. We're not going to be a successful police department. We depend on you as you guys depend on us. So make no mistake about this. We're fully committed to the safety of the residents down here. Um, I've worked with Dan Mead, the chief down here, uh, Chief Fallon, Detective Legros. We, we've, uh, we attend meetings. I see uh, Liz Doncaster in the, in, the, in the crowd. We attend meetings literally weekly uh, regarding uh, youth resources, public safety, opportunities for the students, athletic programs. We started uh, community policing initiatives with the basketball leagues down here. So uh, I just want to let you guys know that we're fully aware of what's going on. We hear, you know, we hear your concerns. We agree with them. A safer community for you is a safer community for us. We're the ones policing this place. We need to get the guns off the street just as bad as you do. Um, as far as the recent events, I just want to give you guys a little update. Um, so the shooting that happened here, roughly one hour prior in Cambridge, there was shots fired. Uh, I believe they found 42 rounds. So we, there's, a, there's an absolute gun problem, make no mistake about it, and that's, that's nationally right now. Not just some of them, not just Cambridge, it's, nas it's happening nationally. And uh, together we need to take a stand and do something about it. Um, thankfully in Cambridge there, was, there were no victims shot. Clearly here there was, there was four innocent people in the wrong place at the wrong time. They didn't deserve it at all. Uh, these people came, uh, prior to the shooting, one of our patrol officers was down here, to, uh, we call it a directed patrol, basically just patrolling the neighborhood, looking for anything that may stick out that, that uh, presents a, a concern to public safety. We, uh, we saw a vehicle, um, they got real nervous, they fled upon seeing us on a police vehicle. We got the license plate, came out of Cambridge, excuse me, it was a rental car. Um, we did some homework, we found out who uh, rented the vehicle. Shortly after that, the vehicle came back into the projects, um, shot, I, I, I believe it was like 23 rounds which is horrifying. We're very lucky that there's no fatalities. It's a, that's a horrible thing to, to experience. It's a horrible thing for police officers to respond to. It's a very dangerous and scary situation. Um, we put out a BOLO, which, is, which stands for Be On The Lookout. We work uh, regionally with Cambridge all the time. Cambridge located the vehicle within minutes. We, uh, recovered. Cambridge recovered three firearms from that vehicle. Some of the police took jurisdiction of the vehicle. We towed it back to the police department, conducted a search warrant, and found an additional gun. So we got four guns off the street, which is important because that's one less gun that's going to hurt us. It's going to hurt you, right? So uh, thank you. Um, should, they call, should they call 911 or is there a special number? Absolutely. Well, for, for what type of situation? Well, I mean, what happened? You know? So the question was, should we call 911? Well, 
It all depends on the situation. If you guys have information and you want to remain anonymous, call and tell them you want to be anonymous, you know? If you guys see something, you're our eyes and ears, right? If you guys aren't helping us, how can we help you? We're in this together. So if you guys see something, you hear something, you want to remain, remain anonymous, we're going to protect that. We're going to respect that as well. Call us up and let us know what you hear, what you see. There's narcotic anonymous tip lines. There's 911 if you need to call 911 in the event of an emergency. There's non-emergency lines. I'm a, I'm a shift commander. Uh, you can call and ask to speak to the shift commander and give us any information you need. It's going to remain anonymous. I gave you my word. I wouldn't be telling you that if we can't protect you because obviously nobody's going to help us if we can't protect you guys, right? So we're all in this together, um, and that's all I got to say. If anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to ask me them after. So uh, for the sake of time, I got you. I'm here all night. I'm actually here till 7 in the morning, so I'm all yours. Thank you. Hi folks, Joe Macaluso from the Housing Authority. Um, I want you to know I have heard oftentimes from the mayor and very frequently from Jesse, the counselor, about things that have been going on in here. I know how very interested they all, all of the elected officials are. Um, but what I want to tell you is there are a lot of programs for residents here at the Housing Authority. We're standing behind a building that does everything from daycare to computer learning centers. There are sports programs. There are social service programs. There are programs that we want folks to get their family into. And we want to assist anybody who needs it. But for those who would rather engage in this type of criminal activity, this is private property and you don't have to stand for it. We have pages. We have pages of no trespassing lists for people who have been repeat offenders in your community that are not allowed in this community. So with your assistance, and with the assistance that we're going to get from the Summerville Police Department, we are getting, we can identify everybody who's involved in doing these things in our community, and we can make sure that they don't return. And that's if they don't live here, then we issue them a no trespass. If they live here, and we can't work with them to correct whatever behaviors are affecting our community in a negative way, they'll be evicted. So the point is this, you don't have to tolerate it. You don't have to stand for it. This is a not a housing of last resort. This is your neighborhood, this is your community. We want it to be safe. We want it to be secure. And that's our commitment to you, but we want you to know any assistance that you can give us, don't be afraid, you don't have to tolerate anything. You will see action, I can assure you, and the people here tonight that have spoken already, we assured you just as well. Keep that in mind. Thank you. So much for all the individuals that spoke. Uh, those testimonies were true from the heart. Obviously, these are individuals that have been working in Somerville, working with the mystics, residents that live here. Uh, we have a large task in front of us. Um, but we only have so much time that we can just sit back and not, let, not do nothing. So we need to be effective right now. I'm going to open up the floor again, uh, give you guys an opportunity to speak to some of your elected officials. If you guys can catch them, try, try to grab their cards, uh, email them, let them know how you feel about what's going on in our community. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things that we can do better, and we got to start that today, all right? So let's uh, give you ourselves a round of applause. Thank you so much for coming out. Uh, please take an opportunity um, you know, to try to reach.